This video is brought to you by Moms Gather. If you missed out last year, don't make the same mistake again. We hope to see you on 11th May. We're going to have amazing speakers, great food, a lot of fun and so much learning and knowing how to do this mom journey with other people walking in purpose as a mom, being a mom and more than a mom. We can't wait to see you on 11th May at the Kampala Serena Hotel. Save the date, make payment. All the details are in the caption. See you there. So many people fear to have children after they get married because they feel like children are going to change our dynamic and they're going to affect our intimacy. Today we're going to be sharing how our marriage changed and how we feel like children change a marriage. So that means that fear is valid, right? It's quite valid, um, but if, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> So we had our first baby in 2019. We got married in 2016, at the end of 2016. So that means we took about two years before we had another person in our home. But we got so pregnant. He, he came exactly in the second year. Yeah, exactly in the second year. But that means we got pregnant a little after our first anniversary. And it changed a bit of our dynamic. Yeah. Do you want to tell us how? No. Mm, I feel like when the men share... You share from, because for us, we're going through the motions. Um, this is someone that you've carried in your tummy. You have, already have a connection to them. We have the mothering instinct already. I feel like when the men share, we get to hear a bit more. Hmm. Well, I think it really depends. We are all different. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think I'm in the category of men who also get pregnant, in quotes. Uh, because uh, usually when the mother is pregnant, there are two extremes. There are those who are, whose libido goes up and then there are those whose libido goes down. Mm -hmm. And yours went down. Mm. So did mine. Mm. So We okay. were pregnant. We were pregnant. Literally. <laughs> yeah, but I also think because of that, the fact that we, it was our first time, we had so many myths going on in our minds. We mm -hmm. had so many questions that were unanswered. And I remember one of the things that ran through my mind was, aren't you going to hurt this child? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but when we talk about the changes, whether emotional, I think I was one of those that were, let's say, fortunate. For By the grace of God, I don't think you changed in the first trimester because you were the first. Yeah, I, I, didn't have, the most. I didn't have any sickness. Yeah. And so everything was normal until I think the child was born, actually. Yeah. It's just me who was more like, it's okay, don't touch, don't touch, like protect the child yeah. and make sure nothing happens to the child. Yeah. So in that way, our intimacy was definitely affected. But it's not like it affected us in a way that we were not desiring, really. Yeah. It was that we were going through the motions and learning. Mm. what pregnancy really is like. Yeah, mm. and I think it was good that we didn't, like, get a child immediately after the yeah, wedding. Yeah, yeah. Because then by the time the child came, we were ready, mm. we were ready, we were excited, we were now thinking, hmm, do we buy this bed or the other bed, the other bed? Yeah. What clothes will he wear? What is, uh, what? Yeah, what kind so of, we had, so. we had, we had our dynamic. We had already established a dynamic as in a, a couple. Way. In a way, yeah. 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 So now our child was born. Um, little E was born at the start of January. Mm. And um, of course, we had never been to the labor ward. Mark came with me to the labor ward. Of course. Mm? <laughs> he, was there. he was there from the the, as soon as labor started, um, actually he was at work that day. Then I called him, came home rushing. I think, you know how the movies tell us that as soon as maybe you lose, for me, I lost the mucus plug. My water didn't break. So Mark thought, I think like in the next hour, the baby's going to come. We went and checked in. The doctor said, no, you're not yet even dilated. I think I was just effaced. All these are medical terms. So he sent us back home and 
to return when I start to feel cramping. Mm. So we later returned, I think at midnight of the same day. Mm. And Mark was there the entire time. Actually, I thought like by 1 a.m. that mm. I would be here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but we spent that entire night just... Mm laboring, feeling the contractions and all that. And I like that we went through labor together because it built our intimacy, um, just having that experience together. So I feel like that built our intimacy and also just the screaming and going through the pain and all that. And then yeah, and almost tearing my shirts. Yeah, definitely. I squeezed him. I, yeah, uh, labor is intense. That's a story for another day. I almost lost a pack. <laughs> One pack. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then when the baby came, um, I went to my parents' house, our yeah. parents on my side. Um, and I think we were there for five weeks. One month. Yeah, one month. So Mark would and keep coming. A month and a half. Really? I don't think we're there mm. for eight weeks. Six weeks. Mm, about. Mm, six weeks. So Mark would keep coming every day from work. He'd come to my parents' house. We'd have dinner together. Then he'd go back to our house. And this went on for, I think, about four weeks. Then at five weeks, we had our son circumcised. And still yeah. Mark was very present. So I feel like for your intimacy not to be disturbed, there has to be deliberate effort from both of you. And sometimes you find that I'm not able to give maybe 80% because say I've just given birth, I'm trying to learn how to be a mom, how to breastfeed and all that. Mm -hmm. And now you're the one who is able to carry us on your shoulders. At least you bring the 80, I can bring the 20. Or I bring the 15, you bring the 85 and you can carry us on your shoulders mm -hmm. to just cater for that gap that I'm leaving behind. So I feel like it needs deliberate effort from a couple for it for, for you to transition through the changes positively mm. because having a child can definitely destabilize you if you are not really like now if you are the man who is not understanding you, like we have even forgotten that this chick has just gone through a lot of pain and trauma and she's trying to adjust to the life of being a new mom and you're not understanding you're just counting down the weeks to six weeks but you're not even there to help um yes she's at her parents she has help but your help is different or even just your presence is different seeing you bond with a child is very different i feel like yeah. all those things helped us build our intimacy it's so funny how when you're there the child can easily tell this is my father yeah it's not mm. yeah it's it's, it's just all god it's a god thing mm. so even we can't explain it mm. and i think when we get to the point of the healing which was very interesting for us because i think for us, we thought we had healed even much faster than we thought, right? <laughs> yeah. Because one, I think what also helped was the fact that you were young. Yeah, definitely. You're young. Mm. But I was young when we had our... You were young. You, you, was, you were younger. Mm. Yeah. And I think what really helped was that fact. So it, I, I feel like I think by seven weeks or so, we were like really, the hormones were back. Right, yeah, and then yeah. now, we, then now we started getting worried. Okay, huh? you can Sorry. actually get pregnant again. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we it, it has been such a journey for us, and mm. I think it's it's one of those that I've I enjoyed, especially with the first mm, time. Yeah. Everything was just learning, mm. learning, mm. and we're learning together. I think another fear that came in that probably affected our intimacy was the fear of getting pregnant again. Yes. Yeah. Like, say you want to sexually engage with your person, and then you're just afraid that you yeah. can actually conceive again. Because mm. for me, my period hadn't yet returned. So you don't know if you're ov ovulating or what. You can actually get pregnant again. So that was something that affected it negatively. What if that happened? Eh, God knew. He knew and he saved us. He knew his person. He knew his person. Yeah. But also hormones greatly affected our intimacy because I was breastfeeding. And um, the way breastfeeding works is that it tells your body, I am nursing a child. I'm not ready 
to have yeah. another. Yeah. So it turns off the libido. Libido really comes when your body is saying it's time. It's time for you to have a child in this womb. Yeah. And we that's are ready. It, yeah. And that's what it literally is. Yeah. So breastfeeding affects that and it affected ours for a while. So a combination of breastfeeding and the fear of pregnancy really affected our intimacy. Yeah. And we actually ended up needing to see um, one of our couple friends, Reb J and Mona. And they just talked us through that and changing your mindset and all that and just talks us yeah. through that entire process and how we can recover our intimacy. I think let's also talk about the healing um, mm. properly because after our first, when we had our first, I had an episiotomy. Uh, so that means I had stitches and all that. And the first few days sitting was very delicate. Even just driving humps. Yeah, even driving over humps was very delicate. I became a bad driver. Yeah. <laughs> so how was that for you? Were you afraid? No. Mm. Because I think the most important, we're already past that stage of mm. the child is out. Mm. Uh, you know, sometimes we get so traumatized by a lot of the story that we hear. This one struggled, you know, and then the mm. child almost died or this and that. So sometimes it's just a good feeling to know that, okay, the child is out. Mm. Like all we need to make sure is that you're not bleeding. You know, mm. still not bleeding. Mm. You will heal. Were you afraid yeah. that um, maybe my what should I call it? Yeah. That area would, would not, not recover. I was ready for it. Mm. Yeah. What if I had stayed white? Mm. Uh, I think we'll still see the doctor because <laughs> these days I hear there are yeah. so many ways you can edit. Mm. So when we got uh, our first, we knew we needed help around the house. It wouldn't just be the two of us. So for the first two years, it was just the two of us. And now we needed to hire help. That means having another person in the house. Um, sometimes it's a stranger, sometimes it's family. Uh, so also that changes dynamic a bit because there are a lot of people skills that have to come in. Then sometimes these guys come and they are, they're frustrating because they're trying to learn your dynamic and your family routine. Some of them have come from very diverse experiences. So eh, also that affects you. Find that you're in the bedroom and the only thing you're talking about is when I get this help, what do we do? Yeah, so I feel like also that affected. And then, of course, you cannot shout hallelujah. <laughs> if you know, you know. But uh, there is that you you need them. You need the help, and it's something which we learned that you don't just get a help. You have to do a bit of research and actually pray for that need, mm -hmm. that help that you need. That when you get that person, they are a certain way. And I think over the years we've got to realize that he will never get a perfect. Yeah, individual. yeah, yeah. There are just certain things you maybe need to to be able to tolerate mm. and others that if you can't, then you look for somebody else. Mm. Yeah. Then, of course, um, when the kids come into the picture, the time that you have together, it reduces and you've got to be very intentional about it. So one of the things that we do right now, we have three babies. Right now we have a date night every Friday. We make sure we spend time together, intentional time together, talking, maybe planning. And sometimes you'll even have like difficult conversations, maybe something that has been going on and bothering you. And now you're able to talk about it. So I feel like that has helped us to build our intimacy. Mm. Sometimes maybe you want to like do breakfast in bed. Like sometimes you'll want to do breakfast in bed for me. Then he brings it. All three children are there. Mama, some egg, some pancake. Can I have some of your hot chocolate? Yeah, so you've just got to, I feel like you just need to embrace the so season. It's just a season. Mm. They're only little for so long. They won't yeah. always be five, three, and one. Yeah, so we've just embraced it. So you can choose to make that bother you or continue to do, to make your wife breakfast in bed and maybe just put extra portions. So I feel like we also need to change our mindsets not look at the children as an inconvenience because you can look at them as, as as an inconvenience and then that will definitely affect your intimacy as a couple but also as parents to those children and just see it as a blessing and a season. But you mm. know, it's so weird how, on that point, mm. it's so weird how they will refuse to eat their own breakfast. But they will eat yours. So passionate. And finish and ask for more. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's so bad when you're hungry. There's a time I was so hungry. Um, so I I had an egg. I don't think I ate. <laughs> yeah. But at least at least I had, I had warned you that you need to. Mark was breakfast. just in the corner laughing. Cause, <laughs> yeah, because I had asked you to have breakfast much earlier before they come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think another thing that affects couples' intimacy is when you bring the child into the bed. Last week, I was talking to one of my friends and she said, it's just easier for me, especially like at, when he goes to bed, they'll put him in his bed. And then when he wakes up to feed, I think he's just eight months now. When he wakes up to feed, it's just easier to feed him while lying down and in the bed. And he'll end up spending the entire night mm. there. But I feel like that will really, first of all, it will affect the child sleeping yeah. because now they're used to the warmth of two beings next to him. He's being sandwiched. He's feeling nice. So now I'm putting him in his, in his crib. Mm. He won't want. Mm. And then when it's time for some mm -hmm. sugar, there's a baby there. You speak on it because I feel like it frustrates the men a lot. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's important for for us to understand that there are two different that everyone is different. Yeah. So the men can actually have that desire to, for example, have especially if it's the firstborn. And then sometimes it's the mom. Mm. And then sometimes it's both parents. Yeah. Like, both are like bring that child to the bed. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's something that has to be discussed between the parents. Mm -hmm. It's it's good for the child as well to to Learn Bond. that independence, yeah. so they have their own bed, mm -hmm. even if it's by the side of your own bed. Yeah, and it's wiser to do it that way. But it has to come from the both, both of, of you, mm -hmm. and knowing what you want. There are some parents who just they, they just love this child too much, and they can't stand the child mm -hmm. sleeping anywhere else mm -hmm. but in their bed. But I feel like, so, babe, you not having your child in your bed. I mean, you don't love them. <laughs> Exactly. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't mean you don't love them. But you just feel like, okay, now I miss this child. I'm going to sleep. They're going to sleep. I'm going to miss them. So let them sleep. Yeah. Yeah. In our bed. Mm. It's risky though in the long run because of the the way the child might be. We'll again. Grow up. Yeah. 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 Up, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you have your child in your bed and you're struggling with intimacy, maybe maybe this is That's a cool. time for you to just consider maybe getting a crib or a bassinet. What we do is we have a bassinet by the side of our bed that, that the kids use for at least the first year of their lives. They're right there next to us. And then we later transition them to their room. So I feel like that can really affect intimacy. And also something that I learned was that your mindset especially after you've given birth, it's very easy for us, the women, to just be in mom, 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 mom. I'm breastfeeding, you're smelling like breast milk, you just feel like you're a cow and you, you, your mindset doesn't think about sex. Like you don't, feel, you don't feel sexy, you don't think of yourself as sexy, you probably may not feel like your husband thinks of you as sexy and I feel like this is a conversation that couples should have because your body has changed. Yeah. Definitely. And sometimes you have a skewed mindset because you know what your body has gone through. You see your stomach after the baby has come out, the tummy somehow turns black while it's going back. It turns black. People have stretch marks and all that. And I feel like it's important for you to tell your spouse how you are feeling mm -hmm. and to have your spouse affirm you. And maybe you can even start to take practical steps to, mm -hmm. to help you feel better. There are ways you can, you can eat better because we end up eating for two, even when we're breastfeeding and breastfeeding hunger is, is real. Um, so you can learn how to eat healthy and just make sure you get you get that confidence back, that confidence especially of your body. Because for me, one of the things that I was actually scared of was just being naked. Like after, I feel like the stomach is so big. You look like you're five months pregnant. And just having that conversation and your person affirming you and telling you, no, baby, you're beautiful. You just carried life and, and all that. And then if you're afraid... Of, if you've had a vaginal bath and you're afraid of what down there looks, talk to your guy or even get a mirror and look. Let your person also look just to build that confidence back. Yes. Yeah. I think we'll close with these two issues, which I think we could touch on. The first one that can affect intimacy is also depression. 
yeah. there's some people who struggle Post, with postpartum depression. Yeah, and it would be nice to when you're expecting to learn about it and mm -hmm. understand the signs of it. What, how do you do? People who have mm -hmm. that kind of depression usually behave yeah. so if you see yourself behaving in that way or even your spouse should learn about those telltale signs so they can maybe get you help as a team yeah yeah so that you can s figure out how to yeah. now deal with it mm. the second the second one is we come from different cultures and different homes or mm. walks of life mm. things are changing now because the parents of these these days say children of the late 90s and they, they're a little different which is amazing but say you get married to a man who is maybe in his mid-30s now or even early 30s fine mm. we have a certain category that doesn't understand what it means to be a dad mm. or be a father mm -hmm. because while growing up the only thing that they saw was providing yeah, and I need to be out. Just give me the child to, to play with or talk to, but changing mm. diapers and what and what. Mm. It's not my thing. And yeah. some of them are very strong on it. I think it's also something to... That will affect intimacy because affect. if I've been carrying a child the entire day, the night, and I just need you to also... Hmm? And you're still carry the load, right. and you're still mm. demanding for mm. sex. Mm. It's definitely going to affect our intimacy. Yeah, so, so I think for us to just labor to mm. be present parents and just yeah. notice, okay, today my husband has come back tired. Maybe he won't be able to play with the kids, mm. and then even you, the Let husband, just to just uh -huh, maybe can just hold after I've showered mm. and the child is clean and all that, mm. and I give them the baby, mm. um, and not expect him to now also carry the load, but also for the husband to notice, oh, she has been carrying this yeah. baby the whole day. Maybe the child is going through a growth spot or colic let me she has breastfed the baby at night let me get the baby and and burp yeah. and just carry your load knowing that this is your friend this is your partner and i feel like this will carry your intimacy even for years to come when you're done with the baby having years yeah yeah i think that's been it Mm. So if you have any other tips on how you can build intimacy as a couple, or you can even share with us how your intimacy has been affected um, during the season of childbearing, and we, we can share any tips or advice that we have from our experience, leave them down in the comments, yep. share this video, share it to your WhatsApp statuses, share it on Instagram, share it everywhere, subscribe, subscribe. so that it suggests to even more people and it can help more people. We'll see you. Next, next week time. on Thursday, I am rooting for you. <laughs>